YouTube. It's Brian Phillips. It's been a while. We're gonna open this box right now. Here it goes. It's fragili. It's fragili? Mm -hmm. It's Italian? I guess we'll find out, huh? I guess. All right, so guys, we already know what this is, sort of. But it's gonna be amazing, and I can't wait, actually. Oh yes, that looks very nice. Oh, it looks so nice, look at this. It's an Aeros Hobby L39 Albatross PNP. Plug and play. Okay, so what do we know about L39s? Uh, well, in this case, it's a 50 millimeter EDF electric ducted fan. <coughs> Excuse me, it's 659 millimeters of wingspan, 808 millimeters long, and the flying weight is around 480 grams, depending on your battery. <coughs> the motor size is 26, 27, 4,500 kV with a 30 amp ESC. So that means the 30 amp ESC is gonna mean it's probably gonna call for a 3S, I would assume. Yep, yeah, it calls for an 11.1 volt, 1,300 milliamp 30C battery. And this is a four channel setup. So we're gonna go ahead and before we go any further, we are gonna get some batteries cooking, guys. So now, if you're wanting to get an Aeros battery, okay, 1300 3S would be this beautiful size. So let's go ahead and try to plug this into a smart charger. So we're gonna plug in our balance lead and we're gonna try to, well, that doesn't work very good. So we're gonna have to get the adapter and we have adapters that have come from different packs like the venom packs that we've done in the past some of these this is a predator pack, it's kind of a similar size so what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this one in and if you have a non-smart battery just for your information you can still use, use these smart chargers goodness gracious it's been a while since i charged that so basically this is the speed and let's see if it even starts okay so it's at zero percent and as you can see we're way down so hopefully it's going to charge but smart chargers, of course, are gonna give you the ability to do that. Now, if you have a smart battery, then you can just plug these in and you can actually, with a Gen 1, I always plug in my balance leads and they just take off and run. Now, I did charge that the other day, so of course it's starting from a higher point. And then if you wanna spend a little bit less than on this S2200, you can get into something like this, which is the S155. Now, the thing I really like about the S155 is it still has the EC5, excuse me, the IC5 and, e, and IC5 and IC3. Goodness gracious. And basically the difference of course is this is an IC5 and this is an IC3, okay? And with that, you also get the capability of EC5s and EC3s, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one in. Sorry about my stumbling over words, stumbling and bumbling. I'm just gonna have to wait until I plug it in. Okay. So once we plug this in, we can go up and see we're at 2.2 amps. So we'll click that and we'll scroll it down uh, to two, excuse me, to 1.3. So we're charging at one C. So starting. Now, normally when we do unbox build radio setup, we tend to do all this stuff and we get it all ready before we unbox, but we just happen to not know what this battery requirement is gonna be. So I'm gonna plug in yet one more. And you're like, why are you plugging in so many batteries? Good Lord, Brian, how long are you gonna fly this thing? Uh, I think I'm gonna fly it a lot because it's gonna be awesome. And I'm super excited for this one. So I'm just plugging these batteries in and we'll rotate them out as we go. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. If you don't already have a charger, you can go ahead and follow our links for the smart stuff and see that. Do we have a link on the website where they can find that stuff mm -hmm. if they don't All have chargers? The chargers and everything. Now my assumption is you probably already have a charger of some sort, but that uh, single charger is only a 55 watt and then the dual is a 200 watt on each channel. So it's considerably more expensive, but here's the thing guys at Brian Phillips RC, I want you guys to buy something that's gonna be a good fit for where you are right now and a good fit for where you're going so that you can save, you know, buying something and then buying another thing and then buying another thing. Just skip right to what you need and get it if you can. And so without further ado, here comes the unbox. This is gonna give us some fun, I can already tell. And I have had L39s in the past and I'm very excited for this. The livery on this one is the gray, blue, and silver. And so I'm a little bit unsure how that's gonna look up in the sky because sometimes we have liveries that are more of like a military style 
livery, and sometimes they're more of, you know, like a sport style livery. So we'll see how this one goes. We have some decals here, it looks like. So we're just gonna cut this off. Now they did manage to fold my uh, manual, which really annoys me. Uh, so don't fold my manual, slide it over six inches. But at least we have a manual, which is nice. And also just to speak to manuals and decals. Okay, I don't know what decals or manuals we need to apply here, but we've had relatively good experience with our Arrows branded products in terms of manuals. They give good information. And it looks like, it's almost like they've used some of the decals already with the possibility of adding more decals. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, so L39 is a 50 millimeter EDF. Oh, cool, they actually tell you where they go. That's that really nice. nice. I always like that. Okay, and then this comes equipped with a vector. We can tell if you could just read me all those Chinese instructions. Mm -hmm. Just kidding, guys. If you don't have them in English, just flip them over. Okay. So that's gonna tell you where to hook everything up. So we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the radio setup. But let's continue with our unbox. Now, as you can see, there is a hand launch relief cut into the bottom of the wing here, which is pretty cool. Our tape is kind of pulling up. Not a big fan of that part right now, but it does press down. It feels like it's a vinyl tape, not a painted tape. Sometimes the painted tape is very vulnerable to having that silver come off. Silver is especially um, bad about coming off a tape if it's been painted while it's jigged in my experience. Okay, so we'll just flip this open. Packaging has always been second to none with the Arrows product, never had a big issue with that. Looks like our aileron control arms are already attached, which is nice. So very clean, there's like no mold release bumps. Oh. So it's beautiful. And then let's see structural integrity. Yep, feels pretty good. And then the, the outboard fuel tanks are actually molded into the wing tips. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I'm a fan of that yet, but it is definitely molded in there. But this feels like it's pretty robust. It's got a good anti-torsion to it and it feels strong enough. Of course, there is an embedded wing suspension here, some sort of like a fiberglass or carbon fiber, probably carbon fiber. And then this is plastic that's jigged in plastic, plastic. And then this is, that's foam that's covering access to where plastic is going to help hold from the bottom to the top. And then of course we have the two aileron wires. Now, cool thing is you can access these both separately, which is really nice because if you wanted to set up a flap around configuration, you'll be able to do that but you do have to undermine somewhat the performance because you're gonna lose your aileron roll authority through the vector, which is a stabilizer and flight controller. It's also gonna do auto leveling, but because you have redundant surfaces, you can just eliminate the connection through the vector and go straight to your receiver, and then you can set up flap runs if you choose to do that. But if you want inboard flaps, you can also cut these wing sections and you can just add that feature yourself. And that'd be a relatively easy thing to do, but just keeping in mind, if you do that, you're gonna to have to add servos potentially on both wings, and that's gonna add some weight and complexity. Okay, so it seems pretty good so far. Now this is, uh, this is the first Arrows product we've done in a long time because they've been out of stock for a long time. And somewhat of a changing of hat that's happened. Um, you may have noticed that the website redirects, that's normal and that is Correct, 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 good. Horizontal stabilizer, it's a black, blue, and pinch hinges. Feels very sturdy, a lot of material in there, which is good, we haven't seen that always with pinch hinges. And these have the upgraded um, control horn adapter, so that's really nice, and it's nice that they left this open so we can get some glue on there. It looks like we're gonna have to glue this together, which is kind of annoying, I don't like gluing planes together, but it is what it is, okay? So we have a nice finish on the nose. Doesn't feel like it's magnetic or anything, so we'll probably have to glue that too. Again, not a big deal, not a deal breaker by any means. And then this is not well protected. There's an opening and there's nothing here. But I mean, it's protected because it can't actually slide out, but I still feel like it's kind of a vulnerable spot. So if you get one that's got a crushed nose, that'd be a bummer. Mine does not have that. Looks really nice, mm -hmm. okay? And then you can see into the thrust tube. Now, since we're trying to fly this pretty quick, there is no rudder. Everything feels nice and stout and sturdy. I like this 
If you're not gonna give us a clear canopy, give us something that's strong and robust. And they've done that with this canopy, but still relatively easy to remove. And there's your vector, which is a flight stabilizer and controller there. So you have elevator, S bus, PPM mode, throttle, aileron. And then what's this? I don't know what this is. Something. Oh, look. Not that we would use it on this particular plane, but there's a thrust reverse on this one. That's what that is, mm -hmm. generally speaking. Now, we're not gonna even worry about thrust reverse because this is a belly lander, and so I'm literally not even gonna think about it, but we do have access to doing the Velcro thing. So we're gonna do that shortly, but I think what we need to do is quickly get things glued so that the process continue and set up as we kind of do other steps. Now, FMS glue, is uh, an option, or you can get foam to foam, and it's really your choice. As you can see, our foam to foam is a little bit fuller in this case, so we'll probably go ahead and use what's left of this and see if we can run it out. We have quite a bit more of this, and it does do well, as does the foam to foam. I believe you can pick up uh, foam to foam when you're ordering this, so I would suggest that you look for that. Now, if you don't find that and you ever order anything someday from FMS, you can order that too. Um, but we have been really happy with our foam to foam product. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and glue this right now. We know we need to slide this in and they've made it nice and easy because all you have to do is just literally slide it in. But just keeping in mind, because the vertical stabilizer is already mounted, this slides in and there's, there's nothing more to it. That's it, okay? So when you slide it in, you wanna be careful where the glue goes. If you glue a lot here and you slide it on, it's gonna push it up this front. And if you, if you glue here, it's gonna slide back as you slide it in, and then you're gonna end up with goop here, okay? So I'm gonna do my very best to apply the glue in a controlled manner. And if you don't know how to do China glue, and I, I use this terminology generically because uh, foam to foam is, uh, is actually a China glue, just like the China glue from FMS is a China glue. And it really doesn't matter. Oh, I said I was gonna use this stuff first. It's pretty much the same product or very similar product once you squeeze it out of the tube. Um, but I do notice that this is probably a little bit more rubber cementy. Okay, so nice clear product. Okay. And I'm just putting it where there's no paint because that's an easy spot to do it. Okay. And if you guys are wondering, um, you know, could I use CA? Could I use some other glue product? Sure, you could. That's fine. Whatever you want to use. If you want to use foam tack, that's fine. I just haven't had as good a luck with foam tack. Um, and also like, I haven't really like linked to it or anything cause we haven't bought it or used it a lot. My grandpa used foam tack a lot and I think he might've used it, um, a little bit for covering. So I just didn't really personally have great experience with it. The BSI products I love, but I didn't like foam tack cause BSI is a foam tack. It comes in a different type of bottle too. It's like a clear bottle that looks like a tube, like a round bottle and it's got a cap that pulls off the top oh. similar to like a ca bottle mm. so i just i don't know maybe my experience is bad because i got a bad tube or something but i just never really enjoyed it that much so okay so this is going to go here i'm going to put a little bit of glue down here and then i'm just going to take and spread this here and spread a little bit in the center and just kind of cover that area getting right to the edges. Now, we're gonna let that tack up, but not too much because you do wanna be able to slide these components together. As you can see, that's spread out nicely. And then same thing here. We're gonna just come in here and just kind of spread that so we get a thin film of the product, which in this case is the China glue in our case. And then I think that's all gonna to touch. So is that right? Yeah, it goes to here. I'm not sure why they just only didn't paint this one little area instead of sort of just doing the whole thing, but we'll find out here in a minute. And I like to stick that on the side of my glue bottle so it doesn't stick to the counter. Now, normally you'd wanna let this cook off, meaning chemically react in ambient air, but because we have to slide it under and in, we are gonna go ahead and get it in there fairly quick. And you'll be surprised just how fast, like watch this. You won't believe me when I do this. I, can, I can't quite pick up the plane yet. You can see it's like, uh, it's slipping. You can almost pick up the plane and that's how quick it is. So you see what's happening when I push this on? I'm doing this intentionally because that's gonna go right into that crack. Perfect. Okay, so we got a nice clean fit and no problems. 
and we're just gonna double check that we have good pressure fit here and a good pressure fit on these sides by pressing down and pressing down. We're good. These are both elevator linkages, of course. They need to be attached, but they're not gonna be attached until we get into the radio setup portion. Okay, now what other assembly do we need to do? We need to actually bolt these on, okay? Do we need to glue the nose on? Um, you know, I'm not sure, let's check. Uh, that's a nice pressure fit. I suppose one could actually maybe not glue it because it's such a good pressure fit. Um, but I think we're gonna go ahead and glue ours. So we'll just, we'll just kind of use this up. Like I said, we got a lot of this and it seems to do well. The foam to foam is very good too. I have no problem with it. I just happen to want to use up this tube. So I'm gonna put it inside there and I'm just gonna go kind of heavy there and then catch this edge and wipe off any uh, extras. This is easy stuff, guys. Just don't underdo it with this product. You need to, sometimes you need to bridge small gaps and in disparities in product, okay? So we're gonna go just a little bit out here and just kind of let that cook. And you don't wanna go way to the edge because that stuff will poop out and look bad. Okay, so you see how I'm just kind of spinning as I go and I'm picking up like a big glob of this glue because I, I wanna get some on the other half of the equation. So I'm just gonna go on here and then I'll go on the sides, but then I'm not gonna really do a lot here because uh, it doesn't, you're gonna get most of your gluing in from the pressure of fit, your pressure fit. Okay, so now this one, we're gonna let that set up and, and cook off for just a minute. And that's just, like I said, it just means in ambient environment, just in ambient air, and then just kind of spread that. You can see how it's kind of stringing up. That's what you, you really kind of wanna see that because that means it's gonna activate and it kind of makes a, a contact cement sort of feel to it, okay? So we'll just lay that to the side. Just let that cook off for a minute. Now, the other thing we have to do is we have to determine, um, are we gonna use a stabilized receiver or are we gonna use a vector? So I only say this because some of you are gonna get this plane and you may not wanna use the vector. If that's the case, that's fine. It certainly doesn't hurt our feelings at all, but we're gonna use this the way that we assume most people would use it, which was was with an AR620 or an AR410, okay? An AR410 will give you throttle, elevator, rudder, and ailerons, but then you're not gonna have a mode, okay? But you don't have a rudder. Good point, we don't have a rudder. That's a very good point. And we don't have a steerable nose gear because there are no gear. Right. So you're right, so you could actually use an AR410. So an AR410 does give you the mode, okay? Now, if you were to cut in a rudder, you would need to use an extra channel for that. If you were gonna cut in flaps, you would need to use an extra channel for that. If you were gonna do flap runs, you would need to have enough channels for that. So you would either give up mode on the AR410 or you would take and go up to the AR620, okay? That's gonna be a non-stabilized, non-telemetry equipped receiver. You can do a 6610, I think that's what it is, 6610T which would give you telemetry on this and that would give you your pack voltage feedback if you wanted to. But I just don't think that's necessary. We're gonna time the flight, we're gonna throw a voltage alarm on, use a Gen 1 smart pack, and then we'll see what type of uh, times we get and we'll just respect the timer, it's pretty simple. And remember, any more weight that you add to this that's unnecessary is just gonna take away performance. Okay, so this is cooked off enough. And so now I'm just gonna literally, I'll just show you right here. See if I were to stick that, see? So it's on there. Now, I don't know if I could hold the whole plane, but you see that tack? That's what you want. You want that stuff to tack up like that, okay? You see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that ride right into the pocket, and this is like really hard to push in. I hope I can get it in there. I might've waited too long. So like I said, and I've said this in other videos, if you ever do let it set too long and you need it to slide in and it's just like really holding, you can actually reapply more of this glue and it will slip in there and you can actually get your good purchase. But remember, if you have too much in there, those parts will push away slowly. Not like they're gonna fall out on the ground, but they might push out or they might, the glue might weep out of your seam, okay? So speaking of weeping out of the seams, we're just gonna take a quick gander and look back here. You see that little bit of weepage there? Do you see it? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you really want the best results, you're gonna wait for this to dry and then what you're gonna do is you'll take the clean side and look, I just rolled it out and then just roll, 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 and it's gone. Look, weepage, gone. Weepage, gone. Weepage, gone. A Little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, so 
Also, I wanted to point this out. If you ever see a plane that says 10 minute assembly time, that's because they were in a hyper lapse time machine. <laughs> Not because on I, I don't, I've never built a plane that's taken 10 minutes, ever. Probably not. And that's fine. I don't really expect it to take 10 minutes. Now, you could build this plane quicker if you didn't mind cutting corners. But, like, why is this a race to cut corners? Let's do it right. Let's get it done. It's not that big a deal. Man, where's our shelf liner? You used the last little chunk of the, you have to open the whole new roll. You're welcome. So I have to use this easy liner? I picked a color just for you. Gosh, I feel like I'm trying to sell easy liner. Oh, easy liner. We shouldn't sell easy liner. Get it from the links in the video description <laughs> below. I'm actually kidding, I don't even know if we do. But if we don't, we do have an Amazon uh, link. You can follow that and buy whatever you want. In fact, buy all the things you want at Amazon. Yeah, buy all. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this Velcro that we pull off of here, and I'm just gonna stick it on here. It's gonna be like pretty rocket science-y. The only reason it's rocket science-y though is because this thing could be like a little rocket ship, which would be cool. We still have to do rockets. We need to- It's like on my list. Yes, we need to get it off of your list and into our reality. So I'm just gonna peel this back. And this is, this is literally in lieu of sticking this to a battery. You could just stick that to a battery if you wanted, but I just hate having Velcro on my packs, okay? So then I take this and I stick it down here, and then that gives me a little bit of play forward or backward if we need to do so. Okay, and you're like, but why shelf liner, Brian? What is so special about shelf liner? Well, shelf liner is gonna take a battery that would otherwise slip, even with retention from a Velcro, and it's gonna allow it to not slip anymore, okay? So instead of sliding on the counter, then if you were to take a piece of shelf liner, it's gonna basically stop that thing from slipping forward and backward. And I wish I had a little example piece, but I evidently don't have an example piece, so we're gonna have to cut some example pieces. And what's gonna happen is it's just gonna bite both sides and the more weight and a little teeny bit of pressure is gonna stop it from slipping with the exception of if you were to like slam the ground at like 100 miles an hour and then it's gonna slide. It's not gonna matter anyway. But it, yeah, exactly. At that point, it doesn't matter, okay? All right, so let's talk about uh, receivers and stuff. We need to get a receiver in here. You are missing a nut sack. When did this happen? Just now, apparently, because we don't have one. Are you sure we don't? I'm sure we don't. I can see it from here. Huh? I can see it from here. Where is my nut sack? It's in that little pocket. Oh boy. Oh, it's tiny. Oh, oh so here, grab, cute. Grab my so cute. bolt sack. Thank you for pointing that out publicly, by the way, camera crew. You're welcome. I appreciate that. That's why I'm it here. It makes me feel very special hearing that you are so in tune with my nut and bolt nice. sacks. <laughs> the good news is once we get past the problems, the immediate problems, is we're gonna put those four screws in and that's it. Guys, that's, every, that's everything, that is everything, folks. Now. That is actually a relatively easy build. And just to be clear, we do tend to like the easy builds. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with having a more complex build. Uh, certainly doesn't speak to anything wrong with ARFs or kits, because obviously all these things kind of started there and we've just worked our way up the ranks and uh, up the ranks, down the ranks, whichever way you wanna look at that. And here we are, okay? So we need to put a receiver in here and we can put the wing on, I guess. So the camera crew seems pretty eager to get the wing we on. You don't have to do that. I just didn't want you to throw away your, your nut sack. Here's the ESC, guys. Look, um, you know, and I'm actually not gonna put the wing on yet. Here's why. That is a weird looking ESC. I've never seen an ESC quite like that. Jeez, that don't look like it's gonna handle 4S very good if we did 4S. It's definitely 3S. Seems very small. Two through four S lipos, booyah folks. That doesn't mean the motor's gonna handle it. And by the way, I do not like where that's going through those wires. Why did they do that? Why didn't they just like have it go on one side or the other or better yet not be down there at all? Well, anyway, it's not that big a deal. It's just kind of an, an annoyance because this is gonna move and that's gonna create a pinch point and I do not like that at all. I wonder if I can change it. How hard it, nah, I'm not gonna change it. I'm just gonna leave it stock so you guys can see how terrible it performs. If there's a problem, you can make your decisions based on what we have experienced. Also, this says danger because if you need to get to your EDF module, you can pull this off and get to it, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna need to make adjustments on the elevator linkages, which is why we're not putting our wing on. Oh, okay. Now that doesn't mean that we're not gonna be plugging in these things, which go to the ailerons, we will. And so as a result of, our necessity to test these things, 
we're gonna go ahead and fire these in this way. Brown to brown, so the brown goes away from my belly. Okay, we'll just snap that in. And then this one, the brown goes away from my belly, see? And if you had a white, red, and, and a black, then it would be black to brown and white to yellow. The red is red still in the center, okay? So this is gonna allow us to test our ailerons and all the good stuff that go in line with that. So now what I need to do is I need to take a minute and come back with some receivers. All right, so we're obviously gonna use our NX-10. You wouldn't need the NX-10 to do a model like this, but I'm gonna tell you something. If you're in the market for a transmitter and you're considering an NX-6 or an NX-8, just do the math in your head and figure out how many planes you think you're gonna do. And I'm just gonna tell you this, if you're thinking that you're gonna overlap or you're gonna run out of channels at any time, don't even worry about the six or the eight, just go straight to the 10. It's the most economical point beyond the eight being mostly gonna get you by, okay? If you're gonna do anything with flap runs or crow um, or something that's more sophisticated like a jet that's got a lot of weird things going on, you might wanna just start here because you're not chasing good money after bad getting to the 10. Okay, if you get a six, you get seventh channel technically, but it's only a partial channel, it's like an on off. Well, it's actually, I've used it for three positions and it worked. But the thing is, um, I don't wanna recommend you do that just because you don't need it on this plane. Your next plane is probably gonna need it, okay? So this is an AR410, it's got no stabilizer. It's just very limited telemetry information. And this is the 620, okay? So like obviously either one of those is gonna fit in here. There's no antenna and they both have a push button for binding, okay? But you can also use just a bind button or bind, bind plug if you want. We're gonna use the 410 because that gives us enough channels to accomplish all our goals. And it is a little bit cheaper. It's not a crazy expensive uh, receiver. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go any more than you absolutely need to to get the job done. So you just pop that thing open and we're gonna go ahead and set this up. Now, in order to set up this transmitter and receiver, we're gonna eventually have to bind them. You'll notice that this is end pins. So you see these pins here, end pins, okay? This is a button, okay? And then you've got battery, one, two, three, four, and they didn't paint these, but it says minus plus S. So S is on the top, okay? Now, how do we know where to plug things in? There's two things we need to know. We need to know what channel goes to what thing, except that we're plugged into this weird thing here. What's this weird thing called? This is the vector, vector, right. which is a stabilizer. Okay, so it is spatially aware, but you'll notice it's already glued down. Okay. Then we have one, two, three, four wires, and they're all labeled. So that's what we hook up to this thing and you're like, but how did you know these things went to the wing? Well, just because I know, because I've done a million planes. Those go to the ailerons. Now, how would I know that I'm right? Once I get this done, we'll test. And you have to test your, your stuff. So if you get it wrong, or you think you got it right, and you still have it wrong, then you have to fix it, okay? So if you watch these unbox build radio setups, we're gonna help you to get the best opportunity at success, but I can't make you successful just by telling you what I did, okay? All right, so we have a model selected. I'm gonna cancel and back, and I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna do this away off camera, and I'm gonna go to add new model, okay? It's gonna be an acro, and we're gonna go create. Now, why are you making a model when you could just hook this stuff up? Well, because I wanna make sure I assign everything the right channel. So in order to do that, we just have to make the model anyway. Might as well just make the model now, and then we can plug everything into the correct model. Now, mine takes a long time because I have many, many models in here. You have a 250 model limit on board, but you also have an external card. So you could hypothetically have more on the card that you pull in and use like say the last five models, you just keep empty and then you just like move them out of the memory wow. card. Okay. So we're on model select. We already did model type. We already did. If you rechange that, it'll clear everything model name. This is where we type it in. So that's 171 models for me on this, on this one single transmitter. That's where you're going to get your money guys. If you do a bunch of models on one, like say this thing is 600 bucks, which I don't even think it's quite 600 bucks, but just for easy figuring, let's say it's 600 bucks and you have, uh, you know, a hundred models, you've spent $6 per unit. Like, give me a break. That's free. Okay. Whereas if you only have two or three, then, you know, let's say you have three, that's 200 bucks per plane. That's a lot. But if you know you're gonna have 10 in the next year, which believe me, you're not gonna have two or three, you're gonna have 10. 
then you've only spent $60 per unit. So you're spending, you know, like the cost of a, a cheap basic receiver per plane. So one half of the equation, one half of the equation, you're $120 in each plane if you're putting a $60 receiver in. So that's how you do your math. It's very basic math, should be very easy. And that's why I don't want you to get a six and then an eight and then a 10. Now Spectrum wants you to do that and I want you to do it if you're following my links, but I don't want you to do that because we want to give you good information. That's not only reliable and actionable, but it's also the truth, okay? Don't waste your money on the middle step if you know you're gonna end up here. Now, if you don't know you're gonna end up here and you're brand new to the hobby and you just kinda wanna like get something easy to get in the air, get the NX6. Don't get a DX, get an NX. The NX is not that much more money and they are eventually going to end support on the DX. Now, I don't know when that's gonna happen and I'm not speaking for Spectrum at all. In fact, there is an NX update right now that just came out today. Oh. So if you guys are watching this and it's like the beginning of August in 2023, check your email. If you're not already getting email updates, go to the Spectrum website and check for the updates. So we're not going to do that in this video, but it is an update uh, that's supposed to give a couple extra features. So just be aware of it. All right. So I'm going to scroll in a name. The name is right on the box. It says 50 millimeters L39 Albatross. And we'll be right back when we're done typing it in. All right, so we've got the name typed in L-39, arrows 50 millimeters. Now, I wanted to put Arbit um, Albatross, but I happen to have another L-39 from years ago, and it is technically might be in my model memory, so I don't want to confuse the two. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to aircraft type, and we already know the wing type is set up. Now, we treat this plane like it has a rudder, but it doesn't. Now, that's gonna come into play later when we hook everything in because obviously this is a four channel plane. So we're gonna have a rudder that consists of a rudder, but we're gonna mix it out. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, next. We'll select image. Actually, there might be an L39 in here. Oh, it's been a while, but I thought there might be one, which sounds kind of weird because you wouldn't think. I know the Habu would probably be like a close match reasonably close we got the a10 there wish they would update those for us and it would you know there is a way you can load images but i'm not sure exactly how to do it i haven't done it myself so i'm not going to mislead let's just do that that's good enough okay so then uh flight modes we're not going to set up but you could if you wanted to and the flight modes could consist of um you know like what mode you're in and the vector so I'm just trying to think out loud for a second. Obviously I don't have retracts. Um, I don't have flaps. So normally the way this would go is I would have retracts here up and down. Um, I would have thrust reverse over here. Now that's the other thing. If you go to a six channel receiver, you can run the thrust reverse. So maybe what we'll do is we, yeah, we're just not gonna use thrust reverse. We don't need thrust reverse mm -hmm. on a belly lander because it's just you're landing in the grass. Like I don't even want a thrust reverse at that point because then you might actually suck something up the tailpipe. Um, this is gonna be protected by the wing for the inlets, okay? okay? But your tailpipe is pretty low to the ground. Right. Um, so I guess I'm not gonna do that. So this is like pretty easy setup, guys. Okay, so we're gonna walk out. And first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up dual rates and expo. Okay, so on the ailerons, we'll set it to switch F. We'll do 5%. Whoa, I way overshot that. Then 10. And then 20 with a reduction in the rate to 90. And you're like, Brian, there's an elevator, but there's no rudder. How are we going to deal with that? I don't know. Let's figure this out first. So there's 5, then 10, then 20, and we're dropping the rates down to 90. So we're going to run in the middle mode. And if we need a little bit more touchy plane, we can go up here. If we need a little bit less touchy plane, we can go here. Then when we land, the axis of control that was of concern will go in and change whatever setting we ended on to the middle. And then we'll double it in the high. Or if we went to this, then we'll set it to that and we'll half it here and double it here. Okay, you understand people? So then what we're going to do is we're going to go to rudder and you're like, but Brian, you don't even have any sort of effect on your rudder. That's true. And so you don't have to set anything on this at all. In fact, you can inhibit that if you want. 
But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and I'm gonna set it to the switch. Why am I doing that? Because here's what I've learned. It's easier to set this up and have it functioning even if it doesn't matter. And you're like, what do you mean? Why would you ever do that? Because it's really easy to just set it up. And then what happens is if you don't actually have anything attached, it's not gonna matter anyway. But then if I mix in a control over here to over here, then I'll have the protections that I want. Now, let's do a timer real quick. So the timer is gonna be five minutes for now. We'll one out, which means as soon as you go over 25%, it's gonna start the timer and continue to count no matter what you do until you press clear. And then at one minute, we're gonna have a voice call out. And at 10 seconds, we're gonna have a voice call out and expiration is gonna be a tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. Walking out to the main screen, you can see we've got five minutes. As we move the throttle up, it starts. I'm gonna cancel, it'll reset. Okay, cool. Now, throttle cut, we'll set that, highlight this, and set it to switch H. Then we're gonna verify it works. Okay, throttle is not working, that's what we want. Throttle cuts off, now it is working, perfect. Throttle cuts back on. So that's good for safety, it's good for startup, it's good for binding, all those things. But there again, this is an EDF, guys. There's limited chance of getting hurt. If you stick anything in there that's long enough to suck into the fan, you might not want to do that. Just a suggestion. Okay, all right, so now mixing. This is something we don't normally have to do, but let's talk about it. I want my rudder to do something, but it's not going to do anything because there is no rudder, okay? So how do we accomplish some sort of a mix? Well, what you can do is you can either use rudder to aileron and elevator because it's already pre-built, so this is rudder to ailerons. Now, I don't know if this is even gonna work and I'll show you why in a minute. But let's just set this and I'll show you what it looks like. At least in the monitor, okay? So when I move the rudder, it moves the rudder. But when I move the ailerons, it moves the ailerons, but nothing happens. That's because this is off. I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, jeez, I just wanna put it on. There we go. Now look, when I move the rudder, it moves the aileron, see? And when I move the aileron, it moves the aileron. The only problem is you see I've overdriven the servo now, and I've overdriven the servo now. So generally what I'll do is I'll run maybe a little bit less than 100%. I'll do like 50, okay? Just depending on the sensitivity of the aircraft. Okay, so now I move the stick, and then I move it. It goes a little bit further. I move it, and I move it. See, it goes a little further. Or if I move it, or if I move it, it moves both. So when I'm flying along, because this is a bank and yank, generally what's gonna happen is I'm going to give rudder to yaw the aircraft, and because there's no connection to anything except for the mix, then it's gonna roll the same as if I were to move this stick, which would roll as well. Now it's gonna do it to a lesser degree, but what that gives me the ability to do is it gives me the ability to move my thumbs together, which is consistent with the normal coordination of a plane with a runner, okay? All right, so now we need to plug this in and get to the next step of our radio setup. Now that we've kind of done all the basic steps, we can clear the timer because we started it accidentally, and we have throttle down at the bottom. Then we have aileron, then we have elevator, then we have rudder, then we have gear, which we're not using, so we'll come back to that. We need to set a mode at some point, but we'll just kind of leave this here. So that tells us where we're plugging stuff in. Obviously the battery's not gonna get plugged in here, okay? We're gonna have throttle going here, then we're gonna have ailerons, then we're gonna have elevator, then we're gonna have... Um, mode, right? Mode, yeah, because the rudder's not gonna do anything. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about how, how to actually get that to, to go here in a minute, okay? So let's grab one, so there's throttle. So throttle incidentally comes out of the vector, okay? All right, so now signal goes up. So we'll slide this in. Guys, if you like this type of content on Brian Phillips RC and not just shorts, which we do very occasionally, this is our S bus PPM mode. So just plug this in. Smash the like button real quick. Don't forget to the end of the video. Uh, give me an opportunity to say things that I will regret and already have your thumbs up. Please do that now. 
And if you want to reward us with an order, which does earn a small commission, so you don't pay any extra, you can use coupon codes, things like that if you have them. Okay, this is channel two. How do we know it's channel two? By looking over at the screen, it says aileron, channel two. So throttle, then aileron. Okay, there's aileron. And then elevator is the third one. So we can just grab this cable. I'm kind of, see how I'm doing this to try to keep the cables managed nicely. And how do you know orange goes up? Orange goes up because we read this little thing on the side that says minus plus S. And it's very hard to see in real life, let alone on camera. I okay. can see it in the light just ever so slightly. Okay, sunlight. you guys see that? It's like a, like a raised piece of plastic. Okay, so now you can see I plugged this into channel four and you're like, well, wait, 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 wait. Channel four has the rudder attached. Yes, it does. And I'm gonna show you how to deal with that now. Okay, so you remember how we mixed all that crap together and we set up the, um, we set up the expo? Oh. Yeah, well that's why we did that. Now watch. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to mixing and I'm gonna unmix the rudder. Watch this, normal. Input's gonna be rudder, output's gonna be rudder. The rate is gonna be minus 100 and minus 100. Okay, so you see this? Now watch this. See how, what, I'm gonna move the rudder a little bit. You see how it's moving? Okay. Watch, now I move it, it's barely moving. Now I move it to 100. Now watch this, boom. It's not moving anymore. Why is it not moving? Oh my goodness, it's not moving! But the ailerons are moving, which is what we want. Now, the reason we did our mix for both pitch, roll, and um, yaw. So I did ailerons, elevator, and rudder. It's because I know that I'm still going to need expo or want expo here. But you're like, but you're not even using that. No, I am using that. I'm hiding this from the rudder output and only using that on the aileron output now. You see what I did there? And since this is on, it's always on, okay? Now, that being said, that means that now we need to make a digital switch setup, and I need to select a switch where I can change modes, okay? So here's, here's what I would lean toward on a plane like this. I have stabilizer on, off, and auto level. The problem with that is I don't generally assign that type of a function to B. B is gonna generally be reserved for flaps. A is generally gonna be reserved for landing gear, but because there's clearly no landing gear on this, I know I don't need that. I also know I don't need the flaps because there are no flaps. And if you wanna set up flap rounds, you could potentially do it, but my guess is you're not gonna need them on this plane anyway. If anything, and you wanna go through the trouble, I would go to the AR620 and I would add an extra wire that goes down here and I would do a Y cable and just set inboard flaps and be done with it. But you don't need flaps on a plane like this. You want flaps for fun. Totally cool, not a problem. You don't need the stabilizer. You just bypass it and go straight down to your Y cable and you set it up. But in our case, because we're using channel four, the rudder, to actually control our mode, we have to now make an assignment to a switch. So this is where I would normally do it, okay? But, since I have ready access to this, I can get to this either because I'm a thumb flyer and it's very easy for me to get this. So we'll see how this works. So now I'm gonna highlight select and I'm gonna move the switch. Now, if you look down here, you can see there's a conditional statement change or conditional change on auxiliary two. Well, we don't wanna deal with auxiliary two. We don't care about auxiliary two. Or do we? Well, not really, okay? So switch B. Now watch this, walk all the way out, whoops. Click, now I think I can do it this way, but I'll show you real quick. System setup, that disconnects RF, which means that light goes off. Then we can scroll down to channel assign. Now remember, if you use a six channel receiver, you don't have to do these steps. See how it says NA on rudder? You see how this says rudder? Watch this. we still want the rudder to be impacted by the rudder. You understand people? That's why we had to mix it out. Okay, so hopefully you're learning something because what I just established is we can't go over here and just say channel four is gonna be whatever channel four is, okay? But we set up digital switch setup for aux two. Well, we don't care about aux two, do we? Yes, we do. You know why? 
because watch this. Now I need to make a mix that's normal between aux2 and what, what are we gonna do? Camera crew, rudder. Now watch this. See how it's moving? So we need 100% and 100%. So now what we've done is we've unmixed this stick from the equation and we're gonna mix in, okay? Okay, now watch. Now that that's done, watch this. See that? Look, it behaves the same as auxiliary too. See how that works? Hmm. But watch this. I can still move the ailerons with my rudder stick, folks. You see how cool that is? So what does that mean? Now this is radio setup. This is what we do on Brian Phillips RC, but generally we don't have to do bells and whistles like that. That's a little bit unusual, admittedly, but we still have Expo on rudder and we still have access to a three position switch that's gonna control modes. One of them is gonna be stabilized flight mode, one of them is gonna be off, and one of them is gonna be auto leveling. I just hope I don't accidentally deploy the flaps and go to auto leveling to land. Although what would be the problem with that? It would just land really nice, in spite of having a pilot like me. Okay, all right, so that being said, everything is set. Throttle cut's working. We have no reason to mess with master gains because there is no master gains. Now, alternatively, if you were gonna use an AR630, which would be the big brother to these two choices, or 631 if you wanna pay five bucks extra to have an external antenna and you don't need that in this application, then you could rip out this device and you could just run all your channels that you would normally need. You need elevator, well, throttle, uh, ailerons, elevator, rudder would be, you don't have to do all the mixing. You just leave it blank. Then you would have gear, which you could use for your mode, still assign it to a three position switch, and then you could have flaps. Or you could use this one for flap rons and you can mix it out. Or you can use this one for flap rons and leave it there. Or you can use this one for then inboard flaps and have flap rons, which could do crow, which would be pretty cool. Or you could do thrust reverse. So that gives you six channels, but you also have stabilizers active on these four channels, which is why mixing this out may not make sense because it is going to correct in the yaw axis. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Now you can change your master gains for correction values from 60 or 50 or whatever's default to zero on just that one channel. We don't ever do that because we don't have to. So that's something you can do in the forward programming. All right, getting back to the point. Hopefully I haven't over overwhelmed you guys with details. There's a lot of details. It seems like the simpler planes would be easier, but they're not always easier. And that's why you watch Brian Phillips RC. If you're brand new to the hobby, we're gonna help get you up to speed so that you can get the most out of these planes because they are inexpensive and very fun. And that's what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and get some screws and we're gonna screw this thing in a minute. In a minute. You know why? Because we gotta plug in the battery. Why are we plugging in the battery? This thing ain't gonna fly. Your wing isn't even attached. I agree, you are correct. Thank you for pointing that out, me. We're we'll just set this down. Now also, this is a voltage alarm that we've used in the past. We've used them for years. I mark plus and minus, or you can look back here real small, plus and minus. This does one through eight S, okay? And there's a button right here if you guys weren't already aware. That button changes the uh, setting from 3.3 volts default and it will change when it goes off. So I just wanna put this in here because that's the way we're gonna set it up. So the minus most, the plus most, okay? So it's 11.4 volts, cell one's at 3.8, cell two's at 3. Point. You know what? I thought I charged this thing. Did I not start it? Or did you pull the other one? Did you pull them both? Because one was done and one wasn't. Oh yeah, that was like 2.6 volts. that was volts. At 0%. So my apologies guys, I am not gonna bind with this battery, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna plug it back in because at the end of the day, if you do something stupid, grab the wrong battery, it's a good thing we checked with the voltage alarm so I knew that it was not fully charged and should be pretty easy. Yep, I'm just gonna start it. I grabbed the wrong pack. It is charging though. It is charging. So that's good. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we'll just use this okay. Predator, Predator one uh, because it happens to have an XT60. Now, just to be clear, if you have smart packs, you can energize and you can plug an IC3 or an EC3 into an XT60, it's just a little bit more of a challenge to force these together. It doesn't look like they will, but um, here, just for sh just to show you, we'll do it. There it is, okay? So you see it's a little bit harder to plug in, but it definitely goes, okay? Now, 
it's beeping and it's singing a song and we've got an alarm going and you're like, what's going on? This can hang out for now for what we're doing. It doesn't matter. I do want the plane to be level, okay? So obviously we're charged on that one, so that's kind of nice. So now I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to bind and just be prepared. Now you can also turn this off if you want. I'll be ready for that. Now look, I'm gonna press and hold this button. It starts flashing and then I'm gonna click bind. Keep in mind that telemetry is very limited, folks. Okay, so everything's dancing. Okay, so we'll roll left, roll right. That is incorrect, wrong direction. So I'm gonna go to servo setup. I'm gonna go to travel, scroll to reverse, and I'm gonna reverse ailerons. Now watch, roll left, roll right. Okay, now elevator up, elevator down. That's also backward. How do you know it's backward, Brian? Because I can tell by looking at it. So I'm gonna reverse it. Now that's gonna extend when I pull back, it extends. When I push forward, it's gonna go forward, okay. That's all working, everything's working there. Throttle cuts on and it's tested. Now I can trust the throttle, okay? Now, we're ready to essentially, we could unhook all this and rehook it once we've installed the wing, uh, which is gonna make it easier to do this doohickey down here. So why don't we go ahead and unplug this now that we've tested the direction of travel. And uh, you know, if you plug them in the wrong side and you have to reverse it again, that's fine. It's not really that big a deal because it's a simple wing type. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide this in for now. I will probably prefer to fly on smart packs. So I'll start with the smart pack in here, um, but it's just kind of a pain to do all this with the wires still attached because I have to pass my wires underneath this board here, okay. So let's move this over a little bit. We'll clear our timer because it's running. I don't want it to go off in a minute. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drop it into the hole. In the hole. Okay, so in the hole. Okay, so I can see inside of there. So now I'm gonna use a tool that you guys have probably heard of and some of you probably have and use on a regular basis called forceps. Forceps are also known as hemostats. They're used in medical environments to clamp off like veins and arteries and stuff and to hold on to crap while they're doing surgeries. And I use them all the time for surgeries on airplanes. Okay. I'm gonna just grab these wires and since they're kind of already favoring down this chute, that's what I want to happen. See this? I'm just gonna walk those through. Okay, folks. Remember that whole like few minutes to build the plane or whatever? Like, first of all, who cares if it takes more than a few minutes? And then second of all, just get it done right. Do all the features you want. Not a big deal. It is nice that these are not split because that means if you do flap around, it's a lot easier to incorporate that into your build. Now, I'm not 100% sure there is a gap under there. I'm just assuming there is. So I'm gonna just test my theory and then you guys get to learn from my mistakes if I'm wrong, okay? Oh, there we go, finally. Okay, so now that that's sliding up, now I'm gonna slide this back, because you can kind of tell that I need to push my excess wire into position. What the heck? Oh, I totally went in the wrong hole, guys. I hate it when that happens. See. Sorry. It did seem like it was gonna be kind of hard to reach. What hole were you supposed to go in? That one, duh. <laughs> Gosh, I am so dumb. Sorry, guys. My bad. See this? This thing's ticking me off right here. I want that thing gone. Why do I care about these stupid labels being gone? Because if you manage to figure out a way to cut your finger on an EDF. Congratulations. Huh? Congratulations. Congratulations, you get the Darwin Award. But seriously though, like if you cut your hand on a prop, I get it, but like this is not a prop, guys. This is totally a freaking EDF. It's stuck inside of a shaft. Okay, the bent tips this time, they tend to work a lot better on pretty much everything. Oh, for God's sake, it ripped in such a stupid spot. That's why I hate these stupid warnings, because like they're dumb. Now on a prop plane, I kind of get it. And you know, they're trying to mitigate their liability. Cam crew, I'm gonna need your help. No, I'll just, yeah, that's fine. That's not what I wanted, but still, good enough. I wanted you to just stick your fingers into the thrust tube, and then it would be like, Easier. Okay. 
like just like this. Obviously, it's super easy. Right. Well, I didn't want to touch where there was. I mean, the glue should be fine. But. Okay. All right. So this is off of there now. All right. Let go, please. Thank you. So this is where our wire is going to go. It's going to pass through this little opening, and you can see where the back side of the vortex stabilizer and flight controller, there's all these wires going in. That's why I was trying to avoid that opening. I don't know why I didn't think that the wires would go through there. That was pretty dumb on my part. And that warning label is just gonna be like in the way. You see this? That is gonna get untangled right now. You know why? Because I don't wanna fight this for the next 10 years while I'm flying this. That would be kind of optimistic. 10 years? 10 years. I don't know, you keep things around for a while. Would, would it be easier to shove those two clips back? What are you talking about? From, that come from the front, than trying to feed those what? two leads up to the front? It doesn't have to go under the front anymore. Oh, okay. That's why I was saying, what are you talking about? You know what might actually be easier though, seriously, would be to send these two back. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's what we'll do. So good call, camera crew. Sorry, we were speaking different languages. Yep. Okay, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to find this Y cable. Why are you filming that side? Film so can, this side. So they can see when you get it. Son of a biscuit, it unplugged. Well, whatever. Since it's already screwed up, I might as well take the easy way out. So this needs to get plugged back into the vector. And as you can see, that stupid safety label's in my way again because I can't see the freaking thing. Look at this, so annoying. Why, stop putting these stupid safety labels on here. It's a waste of our time. Goodness gracious. There it is, finally. Now I can actually see what the heck I'm doing. See, that's where we're gonna plug in our little Y cable. Turn on the light. Right here. See that? That's where we're gonna plug it in and it accidentally yanked when I did all that because I was trying to untangle two wires and I did untangle. The problem is it's very difficult to tell which direction this is supposed to go. And so I think it actually was going this way with the signal toward this side. Okay, so you see that? You're gonna have to move your body. I cannot do that right now. See this? Because I'm using gravity to hold this wire down. See what I did there, guys? I just walked it in with a bend. Now I can take my index finger up there and just pressure it in. No big deal, it's just kind of an awkward spot, that's all. So now that that's down there, and yes, we do have plane stands. We could it's on a plane stand, but we're not gonna do that. Uh, we're just gonna plug these things in and be done with it. Okay. It's now brown to brown, just like before. And brown to brown, just like before, okay? So now that those wires are attached, now I can take and I can lay it on a couch or whatever and I can start sliding this excess wire up into the cavity. Now you don't want that to get sucked into your EDF folks. So that's why I'm being kind of careful about where this wire ends up. And you know what else I'm gonna do? We've done this on other builds in the past, okay, so here, I'm just gonna spin this and that's just gonna tighten up my wires so that they become kind of one with each other. And that's easier than, you know, doing like zip ties or whatever. See what I'm doing there? Just kind of putting a couple of twists on. I'm not going nuts with it. I'm not using a drill or something. And then this can get pushed right there. It's just not a very big opening. And you're like, but would you want it to be out of the way, Brian? Yes, I do. But the trouble is if you block this opening, you're gonna block so much air airflow. I want that airflow to get in here. See? Now this goes here. Jeez, that was like way harder than I thought it was gonna be. I figured that'd be like the easiest thing ever. Okay, so it wasn't the easiest thing ever, but it wasn't that hard either, really. And then see this stupid piece of tape keeps wanting to come undone. If it keeps giving me problems, what I'm gonna do is I'll probably score this with a knife and just cut it, because I don't really care about it. And that's gonna come up real easy. By the way, if you want this to keep looking good, you'll put a big piece of clear tape all the way across this whole thing. 
All right, so now I need to lay this down. And so I don't see any other way but to put a plane stand out, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got the plane flipped upside down. And as you can see, we have it on this surface. So now it's really easy to do this and we should have got that out earlier. So we just need four of these screws. They give us five. That's uh, unusual anymore. It seems like we get the exact amount every time on every plane. Let's see if it fits on this, it does. Now we'll see if it lines up. That's the other thing that we struggle with on these planes sometimes. These are very small screws, but it feels plenty robust to hold this wing down. So guys, if you're watching this video and you're like, good Lord, Brian, you're making this harder than it has to be. I agree. There are times that I tend to do that. There are also times that I make it uh, easier than it could be. It's just that those times are in the extreme minority. The extreme minority close, so close, say. so close to zero that it's pretty much most yeah. people would call never. Mm -hmm. um, but there again, if you guys are brand new to the hobby and you're trying to learn something, we do try to do this in such a way that you will learn something. And then when you're done learning that, you might learn a few other things. By the way, it doesn't look like that blue continues here. seems like that would have continued. Hmm. That's fine. Silver on the bottom is not usually my best idea for a bottom of a plane because silver will disappear in the right conditions. It does look good though. And there is a lot of differentiation between top and bottom. Top and bottom. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small plane. It's going to be fast, I hope because it looks really nice. I'm super excited for it. And to be honest with you, I've had L39s before and we've had good luck with L39s. And so it's, it's a plane I like a lot. We could also put decals on the bottom that would help to distinguish the top from the bottom oh, and give some yeah. differentiation. Now, we do have this plane technically operational. So our next move is to, of course, put the battery back in, but let's just verify that we're comfortable with where we left all the wires which I am totally comfortable with now. So as you can see, you go from like completely not set up to pretty much ready to fly in like, uh, you know, just a few minutes because this is ready. Now, all I need to do now, since it's already bound, is just decide, do I wanna twist these or how do I, don't put tons of pressure, you don't wanna break those solder joints. But what you do wanna do is you wanna get this under control. And if you do it right, you can slide this into this cavity if it will fit. But I need to reevaluate how the bottom of the canopy is. The bottom of the canopy does not go in very much, but it does go in a little bit. I'm gonna try to put this, I'm gonna try to put this probably right here in this opening, okay? And you'll notice those cables look kind of un unwieldy right now. It's gonna be that way for just a minute, okay? See, once I get that in and I push it into the corner the way I want it, then it's where it needs to go and it's done. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. You could tape it in, you could glue it in, you could zip tie those wires, but you'll notice the cable management consists of basically twisting. Okay, I hate having to add a bunch of zip ties when I don't have to. And so that works out really sharp. All right, so now let's put the battery in. We're gonna center this, you know, like roughly on the middle of the surface there, okay. This is a strong cable uh, strap rather, and it does slide, that's the key. If it slides, then they did their job right. Okay, otherwise they glued it down. Now I'm gonna hold the battery tray, and this is where you can sometimes break your battery tray. So I suggest you pull very carefully like that and get that right where you need it. And then, you know, once you're kind of happy with it, just like let it be. Okay, see how I've got that so I can slide that through straight. Why does that, why does that make me so happy? Because then I can do this. And it's very, very easy to get that minimal amount of pressure to now stop that from moving as the plane would shatter around, shutter or move or slip, okay? I'd like that to be a little bit better bite, but it's okay. Now you'll see that doesn't stick to itself you have to give it a 90 and then stick it down like this, okay? So now we'll check CG in a minute. So that's part of the reason why I have the voltage alarm in here is so that I can see how everything is going to be tolerating uh, the position of all this. And also when I slide this in, there might be a nice little pocket for it and there might not be, but just bear in mind that you have to also make room for all your goodies when you're, you're said and done. Okay, so let's plug this back in. Okay, 
a little bit harder to plug in, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. So now I'm gonna slide this into the pocket if it'll go. It doesn't feel like it's gonna go, guys. I'd really hoped to kind of slide that into the pocket, but it's just not gonna go. So that'll go right here, okay? Now that that's in there, then the wire is gonna trap it in the position that it's sitting. Not a big CG shift. And then that's magnetically attached and it feels quite robust. You also notice that it just armed, okay? Now, what does army mean? It danced the servos. So, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right, y'all left, y'all right. Okay, good. Everything's going except for the elevator because we never actually set up the elevator. Oh, for the love of Pete. We also have auto leveling on. We have it off and we have it in stabilized. How do we know that's stabilized? because it moves, okay? Stabilize is where we don't wanna be when we're setting up our stabilizer, but I also need to go to servo setup, travel, reverse, and I wanna reverse aux two, okay? That did not move. That did not reverse. Why did it not reverse? Was it on aux two? Okay. So I'll just reverse rudder. Okay, fine, whatever. So there you go. So now that's auto leveling and it's attempting to find the quickest route to level and then it's trying to correct to level. Now the elevator is gonna be hard to tell until I get them hooked up, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. There's off and there's stabilized. Okay, so stabilized when upside down is not gonna find the quickest route to level. All right, so now the next move we have to do is we have to get the elevator hooked up and then throw some decals on because we'll basically be done at that point once we do through our final surface tests. Oh, is there actually a connection point? I wondered if we could get to that adjustment down there. I don't think we can. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to hook up the elevators. So you can unscrew these here, or you can take off the wing and undo the set screw and slide the shafts in and out on the set. Okay, so let's look at this. What are we doing? Elevator in the outside hole? Outside hole. Okay, so let's see if we have enough. You want this level, you don't wanna be in auto leveling. Why not auto leveling when you're upside down? Because look, it's gonna change the position of your elevator, okay? You wanna be in off or stabilized while holding still. I'm gonna to go to off, okay? So then this needs to be held like with your finger and your thumb, and that's locked in that home position or the center position. Now I'm gonna to try to hold this with three fingers and walk this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yeah, we'll be able to get there. 11, 12, pull, it's not coming off. Half a turn more, let's see. That looks pretty dang good. That looks like that's gonna be about right. And then tugging, yep, we feel like we got a good purchase there, so we should be good. I'm gonna slide this gas tube back, fuel tube back, and see if this is gonna work. Nope, I'm down, I need to come out another half a turn. There's another half turn, and we might be pressing how far we can go. Okay, so now this feels nice and smooth. Snap this through. Do be careful, those things will break off. And if you break them off, it's a real pain in the neck to fix. And as you can see from this end, it's down a little bit. I don't like that. You're gonna have to line up so that they can see. Too close. See how it's down, or in this case, up. All right, so that means I need to pull this out and take it out another half a turn. Now half a turn doesn't seem like much, but we are really getting close to the end of the turn, uh, the turns that we can get away with, okay? Now that we're out that far, I'm gonna pull on it. It's not popping off, so we should be okay still. I'm gonna slide it in there and snap it in and slide this back. And as you can see, we're very much where we need to be. Okay, very smooth top and bottom and elevator up, elevator down, okay? So now if you're in any doubt open the wing up again, loosen the set screw, slide the shaft out and get this a couple more bites onto the threads because it is not impossible that that would come out if you go too far. Now I, I am pulling hard on it, it's not coming out. Okay, I mean it could come out after a crash but I don't think it's gonna come out just neutrally, like under no load. 
See, that feels like it's about where it needs to be. And then I'm just going to pull, I'm going to hold this and I'm going to pull it hard. It's not coming off. It doesn't, it doesn't even give me an appearance that it might feel like coming out. Okay, so same thing here. Push the fuel tube up, slide this over, see if it'll go in. Okay, so it's in. Yep, too far down. I got to go out. Oh my goodness, this one's hard to get out. Okay, so I'm gonna go out half a turn and I think we'll be good. Yeah, that's gonna be probably about right. Yeah, should be good. See, it's just fighting, pushing through. Okay, there we go. Now let's look. Okay. Now I can flip the plane over, put the nose going away from me and let's verify all the surfaces. Elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right is not going to actually yaw, it's just going to roll. And then I'm going to go to stabilized. Feels like that's down just like one teeny tiny bit, but it's okay. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, off, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, yaw right. I'm checking all the different surfaces in all the different conditions. Now in auto leveling, it just went up a little bit. So it's going to attempt to bring it to a level condition. So we must be just slightly down from the absolute level. Okay. So there's elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Okay. Now I'm going to go into stabilized mode. So all the way down for stabilized mode. And then I'm going to take my plane and I'm going to do the testing I need to do to verify. Up is up, down is down. Up is up, down is down. If you can't see, feel. Up is up, down is down. I'm not even looking. I'm feeling. Up is up, down is down. Elevator is up, elevator is definitely down, no rudder, okay? I'm gonna show the people at home. Okay, we're gonna try the elevator because you can see that. Okay, now remember, we're not worried about it auto leveling, we're worried about it moving to correct against my movement. So there's up, there's down. Okay, that's the correct direction. Now this one's gonna be hard to see, so I'm gonna try to get the stupid camera to focus. Okay, so now we're looking, going up, going down. Oh geez, that's just like not focusing to save my life. Okay, there we go. So there's up, there's down. Okay, I'm just gonna let the camera crew have it back. Very hard to see on this one, but you can feel it. So if in doubt, take and put your hand on it and move it up, move it down. Remember, you're rolling and you're lifting. Okay, so you're changing the pitch axis to test this and you're changing the roll axis to change this. So roll up, roll down. It moves the same direction that you're moving it. So that should go up, that should go down. This should go up, this should go down. And you can feel it really easy. All right, so all the control axis are moving in the correct direction now. So at this point, look how sweet that looks for one thing. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is, what are we gonna do for stickers or are we gonna do stickers? Yes, we are. We are? We always... Which one do you want to do? I don't know. Which one do you want to do? I have You're... no idea what any of these things mean. Well, I don't either. I don't know if I agree with anything there. Because the thing is, what is... I don't know what countries these all stand for. I'm assuming this is probably... Who is this? It's a... Uh, Eastern European based, I think. We could look. I don't know. The problem is... We got a worldwide audience and I don't know what you guys want. So I guess, why don't we just do this? We're just, I wanna be able to see something there. So we might just take a quick second and search and we'll come right back. All right, so we, we just came online and we try to find all these countries and like, we don't know which country's which. So I was like, okay, fine. So we're gonna have the Ukraine, we're gonna have the Russian ones, the stars. And so we're gonna piss off somebody if we do this. So at least we're gonna piss them off with better visibility if we do the Ukraine. Now this is, what is this? Romania. Romania, and then this is Bolivia, right? Uh, no, that's the Czech Republic. Czech Republic. And then Hungary is that one. And then- And then this is, what's this? I, that one I couldn't find. Crap, we didn't find that one? No. We gotta find that one. We're gonna find it right now. We'll be right back. So that is Slovakia, yeah. okay? So listen. I don't know what you guys want, but it says right in the instructions, according to your taste or history materials. Yes. So what we're gonna do is we'll use, we'll use the Ukraine because it's got the highest contrast. 
Okay. Okay. So where do they go? There's the big ones go up on top, then the smaller ones go on the bottom. Medium. And then the smallest goes on the tail. Yep. Okay, so that's pretty easy. And just to be clear, if we're gonna put the smallest ones on, then we just kind of center them on the tail. Now this is important to me because I need the highest contrast, guys. Keep in mind, I could really care less. I don't have a dog in the fight on any of this stuff. I'm just picking the one that's the highest contrast, folks. So you can do the same thing. My suggestion is get the highest contrast because this plane is gonna be you know, relatively easy to see, but on the bottom, it's all silver. That's why we're picking what we're picking. So if we're gonna do the next highest contrast, probably technically this has the biggest symbol. This has three colors, which is nice. So it's like, there isn't really like a particular, why isn't there an American flag? Do we not fly the L39? We fly L39s. I don't know then. The, I'm pretty sure they have one in the state of Iowa. Really? They have two L39s. Oh. Yeah, that belong to the University of Iowa. And they use them for flight training or something like that and, and fleece us for the tax money to pay for all that crap. Of course. Which is awesome. So can I get a ride since I'm getting fleeced for it? So the, big which ones, way? Big ones go on the top. Yeah, I know, but like where? Where do they, mm. why don't we put the big ones on the bottom where there's nothing? You can do whatever you want, it's your plane. Bob Ross. Where? Outboard, but it's gonna go on the wing. I mean, you don't want it to cover you know the aileron. Sorry, sorry China. Okay. China, we're putting it here right now. Not gonna let you cheat this time. Put the big one there. Okay, so we're putting that there. We're putting this here. If you guys are still watching this video and you want to help support Brian Phillips RC while I'm peeling these stickers, please follow the links in the video description below. When you buy from the links, you really do help support us financially, which is one of the easiest ways to help support us. And then you guys don't have to write us a check or anything crazy like that. If you do want to write us a check, that's also fine. We're not going to try to talk you out of it, but I would suggest that you do it through PayPal, Patreon, or becoming a member on YouTube, which is a super easy way to support us. But I still suggest the best thing to do is get out there and be flying, but follow the links and you will win for us in either way. Okay, so this is slightly bigger. So we'll put this here. Now you guys notice I just broke all the rows. Wait, where is it outboard? It is more outboard. Okay, it's outboard. Okay, so this is a little bit big. This is a good problem though. I wanted to contrast the color so that you had a little bit of contrast. This is kind of a dark colored plane. When you get dark colored planes, it's great up against a light sky, but sometimes they do tend to a little bit disappear -y. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of gauge this from where it is on the aileron. So I'm like two fifths of the way out and about four or five millimeters out. So we'll just do that. Okay, so that worked out pretty good. Now, the worst, the hardest part of this was just making sure we don't piss off anybody that's like at war killing each other right now, which is what we're trying to do. So please forgive us. We just want to see the plane. We just want to see the plane. And beautiful sunset. And that's what we're working for right this exact second. We hope you guys are too. Obviously, wars happen. People shoot each other and do terrible things in war. And so we don't want to advocate war necessarily. We just want to advocate doing the right thing, which is obviously buying this plane so that you can fly it and it's gonna be amazing. So let's look at this a beautiful creation. Oh yeah, wowzers, look at that. Always gonna love it when you get the decals on and it improves the overall look and I do think it does. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do also is we need to mark the CG. The CG of course is gonna be the center of gravity from which the pivot of the plane will come. And when the elevator moves up, it's gonna pivot on the center of gravity. So that's why it's so critically important Did you have it marked 40 to 45. Okay, great. So we're gonna turn on our calipers, zero them out. And then from the leading edge, we'll go to 40 to 45, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 40 to 45. Okay, so we're at 40, good enough. And it looks like right there, we're at 40. And then at 45, which I would normally leave it set. Gosh, they have that little bump and it's right behind the CG, folks. Come on, man. Why didn't you just do it the same? That bump, they should have cheated it up here. Cause look, look yeah, where our CG is. Right That's so dumb. Okay, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do a little guesswork. We don't usually cheat like this, but we're totally cheating on this one. Okay, so very easy to mark, but not necessarily easy to get right. So let's get it right. And the way we get it right is we put it on our fingers with the correct battery loaded and all the payload that you expect to use. Now, keep in mind this is a belly lander. So you don't have to worry about gear. On the back hole, we're nose heavy. On the front hole, we're tail heavy, which means that somewhere in the middle, we bounce right out, which is awesome. You never get that. 
And so if you pull this lid, the canopy, and look where our battery is, we're at 4.17. Cell one is at 4.15, cell two is at 4.18, cell three is at 4.17. Now, just to be clear, folks, I don't necessarily trust the voltage alarm as much as I trust my smart battery because my smart battery is gonna self balance and regulate the voltages. And so if you guys wanna buy that too, we'll have links down in the video description below. But also if you've ever gotten any plug and flies from FMS or a Predator battery, the Predator batteries have been fine. We haven't had any issues with them. They'll be perfectly fine. We'll bring that out with us. And we have another smart battery as well as the old trusty actual Eros pack, which is 1300 milliamp 3S as well. So we'll just bring the whole lot of them. We're gonna get out there. We're gonna fly while the sun is still up. And that's what we hope you guys are doing right now. And frankly, not fighting in a war because that would suck. Uh, but if you are, thank you for fighting for freedom, if you are. And we appreciate you guys watching us here on Brian Phillips RC. We love these things and we know that they are um, a big part of our lives. But wow, that is really pretty. I love L39s. I wish we saw more in the States, but we, we don't actually, except for the occasional college or people will be flying these and you can actually get an L39, which is pretty sweet. And uh, so I love looking at these things. This looks like it's got a good launch point. It's got deep enough pockets to get your fingers in. And there's also plastic to reinforce. That's something we haven't seen in the past. So when you go to launch, you're not gonna tear up this foam, okay? So arrows, good job so far. I hope it flies half as good as I think it's gonna fly. And I think it's gonna fly pretty good. Also, if you're thinking, Brian, we need 4S, just relax. We'll fly it on 3S and try to blow it up that way first. And then if it does really well and we like the way it flies and it's fast enough, we're probably not gonna test 4S. But if it's lacking or it's weak or it's timid or not fun, then we will go ahead and try to catch us on fire for you here on Brian Phillips RC. That's just what we do. So if you wanna help support us as we catch our planes on fire for yours truly or hit trees or crash or whatever stupid thing it is I'm doing that day, you know where to find it here on Brian Phillips RC. It's very easy. And then hopefully your NX10 setup went smooth. There was a lot of weird ETs in this radio setup, but that's true of many hand launch four channel planes that we've done because you are into the original four channels of control. So we have to do some elimination. And that's what's so nice about having a computerized programmable transmitter is that you can actually mix some of that stuff out and get the absolute most bang for your buck. And if you're here for a bang, you're on Brian Phillips RC. So thanks for being here with us. Beautiful plane. I'm sure you guys will like it. If you wanna support us, like I said earlier, buy one from the links in the video description below. We'll link to the plane, we'll link to the battery or batteries maybe, depending on how this one goes. And then we'll link to the receiver we use with the alternative receiver if you're gonna tear out the vector and put in your own stabilized receiver instead of the vector so that you can add flapperons or possibly add a rudder. It'd be very easy to add a rudder on this plane if you insist on having one. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. Rudders are always welcome on Brian Phillips RC. That being said, thanks so much for watching guys. We appreciate you. We wouldn't have the channel if you weren't here watching us and we wouldn't have any authority within the RC community if you guys didn't give it to us. And so we really appreciate you putting us in a position where we can actually do this and bring you guys tons of content. We know you guys are there for us and we appreciate you staying there for us. Smashing the like button and just keep flying in the freest country in the world, sort of here in the US of A. So anyway, we've got some uh, stickers here. Have no clue what country that is. Hopefully it doesn't cause any conflict with any Russians. Um, but we definitely do want to see this thing fly right now. And we're gonna do it. Thanks for watching.